hey, 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 your friendly DevOps admin David from Trivial Solutions, I owe you. And today I will talk about things that uh, companies might need once they scale up or at the start, you know, how you're like, uh, when you're tracking customer data, you need to collect data as events and then you can perform all sorts of stuff with that data, assuming you're keeping it, right? And then you can draw insights like graphs and, you know, all the idea is that you make business decisions, right? So this is like the old one, like big data keyword, but <laughs> I don't care about keywords, but like functionality is simply you track customer data, what they do, you need to start somewhere and then you draw insights. How to do that very simply and very efficiently with lowest hardware possible. And why I want to talk about this is because, you know, there are a lot of very heavyweight components in big data area. So I will not mention names, but they're Java based. they usually have the uh, same properties. They're hard to deploy. They're hard to maintain. They're nightmare to deal with them. I've spent quite a lot of time in this kitchen and <laughs> what people use, it's pretty horrible. It, it's pretty horrible to say the least, right? So like I needed to upgrade one uh, like cluster components and uh, it took years, right? And it just mistakes just keep popping up and up and up. Just new issues keep rising and rising and rising. So being tortured like that after this nightmare, I will tell you what I would use today and just avoid all that trouble you know because i like to say prevention is cheaper than the cure and on your very early technology decisions will depend you know how much pain and suffering you'll have in the future okay so what do we want from our big big data it's not big data but you know just any data pipeline i just don't like keywords you know what do we want from our data ingestion pipeline so I want it to be low maintenance. Like I mentioned, there is a lot of horrible stuff in the industry. And if you pick it, you'll have <laughs> not the funniest time, right? So ideally we just deploy it once and monitor it. And we should forget that it exists, hopefully. And also we want simplicity, simplicity of uh, maintenance and simplicity of deployment. Right. Also, we want simple architecture because guess what? Simple architectures, they're just nice in general. Simple stuff is nice, but simplicity also scales well. And we'll talk about also scale. And we want real time data. And uh, also we want to derive data from our ingested data. So a lot of solutions, they don't provide real time data. You need to run like badge jobs. You might run jobs overnight and then they only appear in the morning or you run hourly jobs or whatever people do, you know. Ideally, we'd avoid this and just, you know, if we have inserts to our tables, we see updated data right away and derivative data updated right away in real time. And we'll talk how to do this. And of course, we want high availability, but not at the expense that it's very hard to maintain. It should be very simple. And also what analysts typically want to export data from our primary data store and just have it in their laptop, like run R notebooks or Python or any notebooks and just analyze the data with anything just so they could, you know, be productive even on their own computers. So I'll just talk about, spoiler alert, you probably already read this, I will talk about two components for this uh, recipe. Well, technically three, but I'll talk about queue component. We'll need to queues where to store our messages. So imagine if you're like clicking on the phone or something, if you're a customer, then your HTTP post happens, the event is sent out and we can just have an endpoint that puts that event on the queue. And you can have lots of events in that queue. And then another component is where we store all those events. And this will be ClickHouse database. It's super fast and 
I'll talk separately about like cues. Why net? So it's it's the simplest cue I've ever dealt with that I had to work with. It's simple, simplest to set up. You just you know point uh, to if you have like three replicas, then you point them to each other, and there's very little configuration, and you're done. And it's working and it's very simple it's very high performance you know i benchmarked uh, my laptop just for fun it's worst case you you get like a hundred thousand messages per second right so hundred thousand and this is like very worst optimistic case i didn't spend too much time like optimizing for that like to get more throughput but you know if you start with hundred thousand inserts per second at the worst case that's that's like a pretty big feat already, right? And once you scale up, once you get more popular, then you can, you know, start playing around with it. But you're already starting like with quite a big, you know, quite a big gap to fill, right? So you set up the, just three notes, point them to each other. You already have great throughput of messaging. And it's, yeah, it's very highly performing and it's very simple. And it also has a like a jet stream cues, which is basically a replacement for Kafka, right? So, and so far I didn't have a, it never stopped working. Once I deployed this, I just never had issues, right? And with other, you know, JVM based components of this alternative, I did have, <laughs> I did have bad experiences, right? You know, so, so far it's, the greatest queue I used, and this is what I use today. Maybe that will change. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, the another component is simply ClickHouse, and it integrates with Nets. And you just point ClickHouse, get messages from that queue. And the architecture is very simple. So say you like this, you know, this is like your front end load balancer, you know, say Nginx or whatever doesn't matter then in your data center you have like three highly available NATS instances and then what you do so these NATS instances are connected they're replicated when is a leader you know or a master or whatever and then you post messages here and once you post messages here, it's all replicated, right? And now you have a ClickHouse database. You can start with even one instance. What I like about ClickHouse is like uh, other components in the industry, like they force you, you instantly need to like many or stuff. And it's hard to configure, right? You can just start with a single instance. If it's some data you not necessarily really care about, even if it's lost, if it's like some metrics or you just want to play out, you can start with one instance, right? And then what you do is you point ClickHouse, and this is like net. This is your front end, and this is ClickHouse. Click. Oh. And uh, the ClickHouse simply takes from the uh, streams, right? You just make it so that it subscribes. And if you want more copies, you know, if you want this aisle available, no problem. You can deploy more instances. And uh, you can do this uh, like multiple ways. Uh, these can be, you can just point three separate instances to queue to replicate, or ClickHouse also has a mode uh, where you might optionally have Zookeeper three instances for high availability, and they're also replicated. And uh, ClickHouse can use Zookeeper to make sure that you don't have duplicates in the table. Or the duplication and stuff so you can have uh, you may have zookeeper you may not have it I think this setup is once your small is simpler you don't have a zookeeper you know but you can have like this multiple ways and it's super fast like in ClickHouse <laughs> I tried 
how much inserts can I have on a single machine and it's million inserts per second. Million rows inserted per second in a single day, it's crazy, right? And uh, <laughs> querying it, it's like billions rows per second that you're scanning. It doesn't even matter if you're doing sequential scans in ClickHouse, it's, it's just super fast, right? And a number of things that ClickHouse does in the background, it, it partitions your table, it merges uh, your data, like in the, you know, certain infrastructure, we had this issue that we would consume events, right? And the files would become small and then it's not trivial to, you know, consolidate them again then they might not be equal sizes. Playhouse, just like a database, takes care of those automatically, right? So it's, it's the, so far today in this space, it's how I would do things today. It's the simplest approach. You just deploy Nets and you deploy Playhouse and you point to Nets. It's, <laughs> it's so simple. And, uh, you know, in a number of cases, like people, need to deploy compute clusters, they need to deploy like separate big data file system, then they need like separate stream components, right? Then they need to schedule all that stuff. It, oh man, it's just so crazy complex. And here, it's not just that you're ingesting data, you can actually perform compute in ClickHouse. So you have materialized views and then materialized view can listen okay it's ingesting data it can compute some other derivative tables right so this is say our main event table this is like user clicks or something and it's going here and with every batch inserted you can like have a derivative event table you're joining something or you're aggregating something by time whatever you can have like all sorts of stuff computed like that. And uh, also if you want to just export it or you want to have like a, you know, traditional batch processing, you can also select from ClickHouse uh, as a data frame and then do whatever you want. You can export it to uh, analytics notebooks. And it's just, it's so simple and it's so performant uh, I don't understand why people use anything else, but you know, a lot of people these days have legacy systems and you can't just easily like say, oh no, rewrite this, rewrite that. If it's working, even if it's barely working, it's still there. And well, to each his own, but you know, if I had to build a data pipeline and the requirements are it's highly performant, it's highly available and uh, you know, this is super simple choice for me and uh, I can't and once I worked with this setup I can't imagine doing it any other way it's that's how I roll with a big data pipeline so yeah I'll, I'll see it's integrated with NAS uh -huh. yeah so I mentioned everything I think so okay this has been David from trivialsolutions.io and I'm signing out peace